Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Every Christian Church. Woo, there we are. Welcome to Every Christian Church. Everybody, let's stand. Let's stand. Let's say this together. Okay. Just a second. Let me my, my cord back. Right my strap. Uh, there you go. Ready? These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship. Oh, Lord, give Lord a hand clap of praise. God is awesome. Outside, you know that we feel the rain. Amen. We want to feel the rain on the inside. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and sing about it. Y'all go ahead. If you want to get happy, I promise you, it won't disturb anybody up here.
soon. We're not going to see him for a couple of weeks. But he said, he, he don't, don't, don't forget, he's here. And, and uh, actually, this week he worked some on this side of the river driving a white drain gun. So not only did he get the privilege of working on this side of the river, he got a chance to drive a Dodge. I mean, it don't get any better than that. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen. God is so good. All the time, God is good. Ready? Ready, Brandon? All right. Go ahead. But you may, but you just can't avoid it. 
So, get your Bibles out. Turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Stand for the reading of the word. Philippians, chapter 2. Verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. And I just want to just throw this in look for a little extra here. Let, not, let, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Stretch forth you. Hands this way. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, and we know that you are working for us, God. All of us in this last week have had things, uh, opportunities, and we've also had some uh, uh, bad things happen. And life is a series of good and bad <laughs> and ugly. And God, we also thank you, Lord, that no matter how good, no matter how bad, how ugly, there was an opportunity for us to reach out to you and for you to be there with us. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister, God, to each person. Help them to know, Lord, that they're not here by accident. This is not a mistake. They're here for a very special reason. And we love you and thank you for all that you do. And say in the name of Jesus, we pray in the church said. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Dealing with difficult people. The first week was really how you can tell the difference in difficult and toxic. And then last week was the don'ts. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't. Now, today we're going to talk about the do's. What do you do when you're with a toxic person? You know, a toxic person, a lot of times we showed all the different types of, just a variety. We didn't show them all, but we showed six last week <coughs> of toxic people and, and what they do in your life. But uh, a lot of times they just won't, they just won't listen. They've got their agenda and they're going to take care of business. Well, a DEA agent, a Drug Enforcement Administration, also stops at a ranch in Montana. And he talks with the old rancher. And he tells the rancher, I need to inspect your ranch for illegally grown drugs. The old rancher says, okay, but don't go in that field over there as he points out the location. And the DE officer verbally explodes saying, Mr. I have the authority of the federal government with me. Reaching into his rear pants pocket, he removes his badge and proudly displays it to the farmer. You see this badge? This badge means I'm allowed to go wherever I wish on any land. No questions asked and answers given. Have I made myself clear? Do you understand? The old rancher nods politely and apologizes and goes about his chores. A short time later, the old rancher hears loud screams and sees the DEA officer running for his life, chased close behind him by the rancher's prize bull. With every step, the bull is gaining ground on the officer, and it seems likely that he's going to get a horn before he reaches safety. The officer clearly is terrified. The old red rancher throws down his tools and runs to the fence and yells at the top of his lungs, Show him your badge! Show him, show him your badge! <laughs> it didn't matter. He was going to get it. Amen. Difficult people. You can't live with them and you can't live without them. God takes all these people together to make up a team or to make up a body. So, the do's. Now, now, just so we can have some, a little bit of clarity from last week, next week's going to be entirely different because it's going to be toxic people. And so, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like or how it's going to sound but next week. Next week is going to be awesome. All right. Uh, how many people do you know when you when they open their mouth, they remind you of this? <laughs> Amen. Now, now, we all have them. They're in our past, they're in our present, they're in our future. You can't always avoid them. That's impossible. But you can learn how to handle them. And it's very important that we learn how to handle them. Just a couple more from last week, then we're going to move on into this week. So we finish up the don'ts, okay? All of us can be grumpy and difficult to deal with. Can't we? No. 
Amen. All of us can have those times about us. From time to time, we're going to be this way. We're going to encounter folks who behave the same way or worse. So when you deal with difficult people, the fallen tip should help. Now this is, the, remember, these are the don'ts. These are from last week. Realize, number one, there they were last week. We talked about them, but we're not talking about them today. Is difficult people are a part of life. You can't always avoid them. If you deal with them correctly, though, if you don't deal with them correctly, what happens is they will sap your energy. There's certain people, every time you deal with them, if you're not careful, you walk away, you go, oh, that was exhausting. Oh, man, I wish somebody else would talk to them. You know, I like I remember that time that we had to meet with all the big guys at Fountain, all the, 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 the presidents and the the, the, all the CEOs and COOs and all that and the, the CFO called me into the meeting because they were eating clean his clock and he says I need you at the next meeting to be there with me just so I have some backup I said okay and about five minutes before the meeting I get a phone call from him and he says David I thought about a lot about this I thought you were going to tell me you didn't need me I was going to be happy and he said I decided you're going to leave the meeting Oh, you're going to leave. Oh, I'm going to leave. Okay. So instead of looking over my information, I just started praying. I prayed all the way there. When we got there, it was so amazing because these people were being very difficult. Very difficult. But I didn't run from it. And it's amazing how God opened the doors and I just started having a book and started reading regulations. And as I'm reading, the guy's going, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. David, you're on top of this. Let's do what you said. And, well, and the CFO was me going, we walked out and he said, I told him the same thing the last two meetings. Why? I said, but did you bring God with you? Well, come on now. So I see this. If dealt with correctly, both of y'all will be better. So ready? Here's the don'ts. There's just one page, the don'ts. Okay? <laughs> oh, there you go. I saw some of that yesterday. Check yourself. Make sure you're not the one being, don't be the one being difficult. Number two, don't try to change the other person. Even when you can't see it, God's working out things for you good. Don't lecture them. Do not protect them from their consequences. And do not allow yourself to be caught up in the other person's emotional burst. Because if you get caught up in these emotional bursts, guess what's going to happen? You're nothing better. You're in bad, bad shape. So it's very important that you watch these things and pay attention. So again, one more time, the don'ts. One more time, don't, or make sure that you don't be the one being difficult. Number two, don't try to change the other person. Number three, don't lecture. Number four, don't protect them from their circumstances. Number four, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Number five, don't allow yourself to become caught up in the other person's emotional outburst. Now here's the, the doobies. Y'all say doobies. I, I used to like the doobies on Romper Room. Y'all remember Romper Room? And the doobies, I always wanted to be a doobie. I didn't want to be a don't be. Amen. Although for the first for the first few years of my life, I thought my first name was don't. Don't, son. Don't, son. Don't, son. Okay. If you're being mistreated physically, if you're being mistreated emotionally, there's two ways to be mistreated. One, they can actually be, be pushing you around, so to speak, physically. That's never acceptable, ever. Number two, they may be pushing you around emotionally. That's not acceptable either. So what do you do if this is a co-worker, you're at work, and maybe the physical thing's not really, really pushing you, but he's setting you up. Okay? Not pushing you physically, but he is setting you up for failure. Or he's setting up for a fall. Or he's doing something to make you look bad. Alright? You ready? It's time to start taking care of yourself. You gotta stand up for yourself. Alright? But it doesn't require an angry outburst. You ain't gonna get there and say, no, stop that! That's not going to solve anything because two buckets of gas thrown on the same fire is not going to help things. All right? So I said, though, in a calm, mature nature, re res uh, resolute the matter. So I said, for he himself said, I'll never leave you, 
nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Here's what I always say. When I find somebody trying to abuse me emotionally or physically, here's what I say. Watch this. I do not accept your behavior. Without hollering, without pulling out a rod, without grabbing a gun, I'm not talking about if you're really in trouble now, somebody's coming at you trying to, to actually abuse you physically, so an actual a, a, a system where somebody's getting ready to take you down. That's different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a co-worker or, or, or somebody, you know, a family member that's actually just, they're just being abusive by the way they're handling you, okay? I'm not talking about wife and spousal abuse. That's, I'm not talking about somebody just trying to get the best of you, trying to prove their point. Here's what I say. Either I do not accept this, or I do not agree with this. That's what I tell them. I, I, I don't agree with this. I mean, you can say what you want. I do not agree. If they continue, I may even ask them, well, what's your opinion then? And when they get through, I say, I can see your point. But let it be known. I do not agree with this. And I don't have to accept this. And remember from last week, if you need to, turn around, tell them, because I don't accept this, because I don't agree with this, I am going to turn around and walk away if it does not stop. And if they don't stop and keep on barking at you, just turn around, look at them and say bye, and walk out. You say, well, why if that hurts their feelings? Really? They have to learn to accept the consequences of their emotional outburst. And if you accept it, they're going to keep getting more and more and more until finally it may become violent. So you just say, I do not accept this. I don't agree with this. And say, so if it doesn't stop, I'm going to turn around and walk away and then turn around and walk away. Stand up for yourself. First do. The second do. We're all fallen creatures and all very hard to live with. <laughs> really? I didn't think I was hard to live with. <laughs> yeah, you ask my wife, ask my boys. <laughs> Everybody in here has got your perks. Everybody in here has got certain ways it is about you. So, so watch this. But you've got to learn to forgive people. And this is the hard part. Get ready. I'm going to sit back down for this one. Because I do not want to be misunderstood. And remember, we're not talking about difficult people as in there's actual physical abuse. You need to get away from that. I always tell people they're in danger of being hurt physically. Somebody get ready to beat them up. Whatever. You get away. You get safe. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you got a difficult person that's trying, to, trying their best to hurt you in some way or get you emotionally upset. So watch. You ready? You're hurting yourself more than you're hurting anyone else if you don't learn to forgive the person that hurt you. Forgiveness should not be confused with enabling. Okay? After, you're, after you have forgiven a difficult person in your life, you're not compelled to accept continued mistreatment. Amen? Now watch this. Now, now this is the hard one. Get ready, get ready to do this. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. That doesn't mean that if you, if you don't forgive somebody, you're going to hell. But it does mean that you'll have hell on this earth. And you will hinder your relationship with God. So get ready. I didn't write this up here. So you can take notes on this one. Everybody. Y'all say everybody. 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 everybody has been commanded, the commandment, forgive. Everybody. Everybody. No matter what. Don't say no matter what. No matter what. You have to forgive. Forgiveness itself is unconditional, the forgiveness part. Forgiveness, so what if they won't accept it? What if I can't talk with them? What if I can't get around them? It doesn't require you getting around them. Forgiveness only requires one person. And that's you. That's it. One person. So, 
When you, when you, that one person, you unconditionally forgive them, guess what kind of love that requires? Agape love. Remember, if you've been to counseling with me, or even as we talk about it here, there's four types of love in the New Testament. One of them, the best of all, is agape love. Agape love gives, expecting nothing in return. That's when you're the most like God, is when you give, forgive, expect nothing in return. So, so, agape love is, in, is what you need when you're going to give unconditional forgiveness. I don't have to see that person. That person can be dead. That person can be in prison. That person can be in another state. <clears throat> Me and that person may never see each other again. I don't have to call them up and say, I forgive you. I, this problem is between me and them, but it's hindering me and God. And because that problem between me and them is hindering me and God, then the best thing I can do is forgive them without them even being involved. And when I do, I open up the channels between me and God. And I want the channels flowing freely between me and God. So I can forgive you without ever looking at you again, without ever speaking to you again. No matter what, forgiveness, say unconditional. Say unconditional. Unconditional. And forgiveness requires agape. True God love. Because you give them not expect anything in return. And it is immediate. Now the next takes time. First there's forgiveness. And then there's reconciliation. I'm going to pop that thing. Uh, then there's reconciliation. Now, reconciliation is different than forgiveness. Sometimes we get it confused. We think if we forgive somebody, we have to be reconciled just like that. That's not how it works. There's some people I have forgiven, but I know that they're going to continually do what they said. I mean, can they just continually do it? So if you're slapping me in the face, and I've turned the other cheek and you keep on slapping me and slapping me and slapping me. And, and, and I forgive you for slapping me. But if I keep putting my face out there for you to slap it, now that's on me. So, God says you have to forgive. It takes one person, just you, and, and actually it's between you and God. It requires a God pay. But the next one requires philia, or philia, love, brotherly love. And this one here is conditional. The first one's unconditional. Forgiveness is unconditional. But reconciliation is conditional. <coughs> Being conditional means why if the other person's not ready to reconcile? Forgiveness requires one person. Reconciliation requires two. Why if that person's not ready? Why if that person does not want to? Why if that person is harming you? So, there comes a time. Well, forgiveness is always possible, but sometimes reconciliation is not. But if it is, it's going to require time. So, agape, forgiveness, unconditional, immediate, one person. Reconciliation is conditional, it requires philia, and it takes time, and it takes two people. So, I would like to think... And everybody that had a problem with me and vice versa. Number one, I'd like to think I have forgiven them. Number two, I'd like to think there's reconciliation of some type. But at least if there's not, let it grow. I mean, God, what I ask God to do is I say, God, I need you to open the doors for reconciliation. And if you open the doors, give me wisdom to walk through it. But no matter what, I forgive Matter of fact, remember, you ain't got to tell them you forgive them. But you got to talk to them if you're going to do reconciliation. There's got to be communication. So, make sense? I love this. A keen sense of humor helps us to overlook the unbecoming, understand the unconventional, tolerate the unpleasant, overcome the unexpected, and outlast the unbearable. That was from Billy Graham, our modern day apostle. Billy Graham, you got to learn to laugh at difficult times. You got to learn to laugh not only at what's going on, but learn to laugh at yourself. How many here can laugh at yourself? Amen. <laughs> you might as well do it right now. But I'm looking at you, y'all. Y'all deserve a laugh. <laughs> not because you look ugly, not because you look crazy, but because it helps. Amen. Let me tell you something about laughter. 
This is one of the versions that I, I saw of this. I love it. Laughter is medicine for the soul. So take your medicine early and often. Let me read you some more versions of this. Uh, this is so, so awesome. I had it right here where I could get to it. And uh, there it is. Okay. Laughter is a medicine, is medicine for the soul. So take your medicine early and often. Also, the Amplified Version says, A happy heart is good medicine, and a cheerful mind works healing. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. The New Living Translation, A cheerful heart is good medicine, a broken spirit saps a person's strength. And then the message, A cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom leaves you bone tired. And so you have to learn how to laugh over things. Try to find some good things that's going on. You see, look, life has a lighter side. Look for it, especially when times are tough. Listen carefully. Life itself can get really heavy. Life itself, the path to heaven is lined with burdens. It's lined with minds. It's lined with trouble. But laughter gives you a break when you're heavy laden. When your mind is saying, I just can't take it anymore. I don't think I can handle it anymore. Laughter, God designed laughter to give us a break. To cause us to have an emotional breakthrough. It doesn't take the pain away. But it does provide a much needed break. I laugh all the time. You got to. Nothing works faster. And nothing will bring your mind and body back in balance than a good old hearty laugh. Learn to laugh in your pain. Learn to trust God and just whatever it can be. Look, God, show me something funny in all this because it don't feel funny right now. Okay. Like when a doctor was giving me my shots on my knees, he said, this really may hurt. He said, how did it feel last week? I think it was three weeks of it. I said, it really hurt last week. I said, it was worse than after you got through with me than before I went to you. He said, well, I, 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 he said, well you may hurt. I said, well, thanks a lot, Gilligan. You know how Gilligan would tell you after? I said, why are you telling me now? He laughed and I laughed and walked down and we were just chuckling. Because you know what? The knees were hurting, but my heart was merry. <laughs> Amen. All right. No one can drive us crazy unless we give them the keys. Y'all said it with me. No one can drive us crazy unless we give them the keys. Then take the keys away from them. Amen. So watch. Here it is. Get ready to close. Do accept personal responsibility. Watch this. Make your own corner of the world peaceful, productive, and purposeful. If your world... And look, if your world is a little crazy, perhaps it's time to consult who you see in the mirror. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, it's so easy to blame everybody else. But you know what? If the water's hot, and I keep my hand under it, it's burning me, and I don't take my hand out from out of that water spigot. I can blame everybody. I can blame the water company. I can blame the plumbers. I can blame that water. But guess who's at, who's at fault? Because I kept my hand in the water. Amen. You know, I was at a restaurant the other night. My nose was stopped up really bad. I was getting feeling congested. So I went to a, went to a Mexican restaurant. I said, Linda, I think I got a cure for this. And they brought out the sauce. I said, no, you got something hotter than this. And she went, oh, there. And she brought it up, and I pulled that chip out, and I put it in my mouth. <clears throat> and I'm not kidding. <clears throat> I heard the alarms go off in my head. I tried to swallow, and all the way down, I thought lava. And she walked by the table, and she said, Oh, forgot to tell you, this may be extra hot. <laughs> Linda said, What you gonna do, big boy? It's hot. And I kept on going. And she said, I don't want to hear. <laughs> you just keep putting it in your mouth. I found that she had some, I call it cold cream, but it's sour cream. I finally stuck my fingers in her sour cream and pulled it up and just stuck it in my mouth. 
common noun. And she said, that's crazy. You know it burns and you keep on going. I said, but there's a purpose. I'm trying to burn it out. She said, you're going to burn everything out. My nose is running. My eyes are running. My ears are running. My mouth is running. But you know what? It burned it out. Amen. But I wouldn't recommend y'all to do that all the time. All right. No one can drive us crazy unless we give them the keys. And then finally, this is where we're going to park for just a few minutes and we're going to close. We're going to park for a while, though. Have you not learned great lessons from those who embraced themselves against, or embraced themselves against you and disputed passage with you? Haven't you learned a lot of lessons from them? I've learned more from defeat than I have from victory. I've learned more from troubled times than I learned from when times weren't so troublesome. I remember when I was way old back in the day when we were just EMTs, not paramedics, and we were EMT Ds and EMT intermediates, but we knew no paramedics, and, and there was so much more that I'd really like to have done, but couldn't. But I remember all the stuff we learned, and we had recess at Annie, and we had all this stuff going, and in the classroom, man, it was awesome. But the first time I hopped in that rescue squad, and there was a real person in cardiac arrest, and I did not have a defibrillator, and I knew that it depended on me and my partner doing CPR the proper way to get her to the hospital, or she was going to die. Things changed. In the classroom, oh yeah, it was awesome. When it really happened, and now I'm in the back of the rescue squad, and they're going, I don't know how fast they were going, because I caught them, kick it, kick it, kick it. And I'm trying to hold myself up doing CPR, and things are like it was today. It was kind of stone age back then. And, and I just remember, you know what? Things are different when it's for real. And now you're doing all that other stuff. What's going on around you, what's happening, what's going on, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, things are different. So, I realize though, that I've learned my greatest lessons in times of trouble, in times of stress, in times of when the rubber would met the road and it was just me and God, that's when I learned the best. And that's when I learned how to be calm. Not in the classroom. I learned how to be calm when I kept noticing that every time I had a problem, God always showed up. And if I trusted Him, He would help me. So now, not difficult people. Here's how I want you to view this. And remember, next week's toxic. <clears throat> so toxic is going to be a little bit different. But again, it's going to be there because I'm not going to just tell you leave toxic people alone. That's not what I'm going to tell you. Some people say just leave them alone. Not if I'm married to them, not if I gave birth to them, not if, I, if they're my parents, not if they're a co-worker. I just can't leave them alone. So how do I handle them? Next week, tell me how Jesus handled them. That's what I want to know. Matter of fact, if you haven't watched Chosen, keep saying it. That world, that, that show, you heard of the, the show Chosen. <clears throat> the Chosen. It has become such a phenomenon that season three is opening up in the theaters. Not just on television, but in the theaters. The first two episodes is going to be a two-hour movie. And the, what makes it so special is Jesus, it shows him as a real, down-to-earth person. Every time I watch it, I make it, it draws me closer to Jesus. I can't, I've always been trying to have a close relationship with Jesus, but I just had a hard time sometimes picturing everything. But after watching The Chosen, man... Now the scripture has come to life so powerfully because he was the kind of guy you wanted to be around. Even the people that are doing it, the actors, I was watching what one actress was saying last night. She said, I always had, I always was spiritual. I was always, I had salvation and loved Jesus. The one that was playing Peter's wife, she said, she said, but with this, she said, every time we do it, I just feel closer to God. Every time. I feel just so much closer to him. Every time I watch it, I feel closer. So make sure you watch that. But look, 
you challenge your people, get ready. It's your assignment. God, I'd rather you say you view challenging people as somebody you're going to remove from my life. Not always. Maybe he'll remove, remove them after you've completed your assignment. View challenging people as your assignment. Ask yourself. Listen carefully. Ask yourself, what is this person meant to teach me? Well, they might not personally pull up a chalkboard and go, you need to do this, 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 this. But if you start working with this person, you'll find out there's something in there that God is using with them to show you yourself. That's hard. But usually when you're with a challenging person, there's things in them that you see that will drive you crazy that if you really look in the mirror, it may just be a reflection of you. Ouchie. But truly. Every person in our lives has a lesson to teach us. Every person has a lesson to teach us. And some lessons include to become stronger. Some lessons are in a way to become more communicative. Some is just where you can trust the intuition or trust your faith and trust God. You know what intuition is? Intuition is actually... <clears throat> The more knowledge you get about a subject, the more intuition you have about that subject. So you think, well, I'm just going to trust my intuition. Well, you need to learn all you can about things because the more you learn, the greater your inner, 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 uh, intuition becomes. All right? You may have to learn to be more self-loving. You may have to learn to know when to let it go. And sometimes you just have to learn to be nothing like this person. I had a man, and, and Brandon kept getting replaced something. I had a man one time that actually was a mentor of mine. And this mentor was having problems with his higher ups. And because him and his higher ups were having problems, and I was trying to get into the ministry. I became the palm. And I hated it. But my mentor who until the uppers got into it wrote the stuff to the state office and everything was I was spotless, squeaky clean but after other guys started coming down on him and I wasn't even in the church anymore. I was, I was starting another church. He hit me. Hit me hard. Not personally but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It got so bad that I would lay in my car as we were going away to church and I would cry. And I, I said, God, if this is what ministry is about, I don't think I want to go to church anymore. And finally one night, I told God, God, you say that you, in every point, been tempted like us. And you've been through everything we've been through, but I don't think you've been through this. I said, this is how I told him. I said, God, I think you blew it on this one. You don't know what it feels like. And he whispered in my, he whispered in my spirit, Judas. And once he whispered in my ear, Judas, I started healing. Because I went from blame to accepting responsibility. And I went from, oh, me, 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 to God, what is it you want me to learn? Show me these lessons. I need to know. Show them to me. And he taught me stuff through that situation that helped me and my pastor more than anything I can think of. And before that man died, the Holy Spirit worded out that we could, I'd already forgiven him, but reconciliation. I never told him this. 
Well, there was many days when I was going through troubles, trying to help other people go through troubles, and trying to counsel. I was a young pastor, trying to get everything going on. I would always think, wait a minute. I know how I felt with me. I can't do that with them. And I would thank God for that troubling, challenging situation because I learned more in that six month period, maybe a year, I learned more there than any university could have taught me. And even to this day, that man's been dead for years. Even to this day, when I think about him, I think about the good times we had until this. And then when this pops up, and the enemy tries to throw it back in my face, you know what I say? God, I thank you for the lessons. The powerful lessons that you taught me through this. I can never thank you enough. And I hope he's enjoying you in heaven. No matter when you got a troubled person, when you got a person that's there absolutely driving you up the wall, they're being just as difficult as difficult can be. Remember, ask yourself, God, is this my assignment? And what am I supposed to be learning? What am I supposed to be teaching? Show me. Matthew 5, 14 says you are the light of the world. A city on a hill that cannot be hid. Let your light shine before men. Everybody in here right now, it's easy for my light to let my light shine to y'all because I love y'all. I know y'all would not hurt me on purpose. I wouldn't hurt you on purpose. We, 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 we are the body of Christ. It's honestly it's easy to shine front of y'all. When you step out that door, you go to work, you're at Walmart, you're, somebody comes up and, and, and does something to you or you got to handle some hard problems. That's when that works. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Yes, they're difficult. Do you think they're, more, they're so difficult that God can't handle it? Do you think they're so difficult that God can't help you to help them? Let your light shine. Everybody stand. <laughs> Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I think one of the hardest things about dealing with difficult people and the challenge that's presented with it is that instead of driving you to God, it can drive you from God. You start trying to figure this out on your own. You start trying to do it on your own. And pretty soon, not only are you being overcome by the challenge and the challenging person, but you're also losing out and being challenged in your spiritual life. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I'm facing some challenges and some challenging people. But also, it's caused me to have a challenge between me and God now. My relationship has been challenged. And I want things right between me and God. That's number one. You can't exhibit a God pay if you don't have it. That's number one. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. If you say, Pastor, I'm having some challenges with my relationship with God. And I want it right. But nobody's looking around. You don't, I'm not going to make an example out of you. Just raise a hand so I can pray for you. Put that hand up. I'm having challenges. 
I'm having challenges. I'm having challenges. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them, Lord. Maybe you're here today and you're just having some challenging people in your life. And these challenging people, I talked to somebody recently. And while I was talking to the person, I couldn't believe it. Y'all don't know, so don't think of somebody in here. But I was shocked. Because the person I was talking to, I told them that the person that had caused them trouble had died. And they said, good for them. They deserve it. By the way they treated me. And I said, I cannot believe you just said that. That let me, let me know that that person when they challenged them challenged his relationship with God too. If you're here today and you've got challenges with people and situations and you want to do it godly and do it godlike and you want God to be proud of you and give you what you need to do these things and you want to do it in a way to bring glory to God so you can be a light on the light on a hill that can or city on a hill that cannot be hid you can be the light of the world with nobody looking around you're saying I just need God to give me strength and wisdom and what I need for this journey nobody looking around we just put that hand up and I said, I need it. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. It is so important that our light shines. It is so important that our light shines. So, so important. When that person I was talking to, and I told him, I said, well, you know that guy died. I was shocked for him to say good. Because this guy had not offended him by cutting off his leg, killing his child. This guy had just done him wrong in a couple of business deals. I kept wondering why his heart was so hard for other things. And after he told me this, I said, you know what? I bet that's where his heart got hard at, right there. We can't let it happen. People are going to be difficult. They're going to be hard to handle. You're going to be difficult at times. You're going to be hard to handle. But it's best that you use the same grace with other people that you want given to you. Now we're all going to pray together. First, we're going to pray. We're going to, I'm going to pray this prayer, and then we're going to say the Lord's prayer. But I want you to pray with me, Father. Father I'm, helpless I'm helpless without you. Without you. I, need your guidance. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom. I need, your wisdom. I need you to show me, you to show me how, to how to forgive. I need you to show me to show how to have reconciliation when possible, Father. I need you to show me. How to have peace with all men. And Father, I need you to let me have peace with you. It is so important. Without you, I can't do any of this. Lord, I thank you for it. And I know, God, that you got this. Help me, Lord, not to walk by my emotions. Not to walk by my feelings and my sight. But help me to walk by my faith in you and your word. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. And when we have to say the Lord's Prayer together, Brother Wayne, we dismiss us in prayer. Who brought us here? Our Father.
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this another day that you've allowed us to be part of, Lord. Father, we ask you to be the heart of this door so that our light shine, Father, for you. Father, dear, you pass me to this day. Father, we ask you to send a special blessing upon the veterans, Lord, those that are living now, Father, that we gave life for us to have freedom. And we know the only true freedom, Father, comes from your Son, Jesus Christ. And all that we ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Amen.